Hello everyone, my name is Filip Monilov and in this video we will be going to one of the oldest factories for making plaster moulds, George Jackson in the UK. The company was established in 1780s and we will be seeing the process of traditional composition making. Let's get into it. George Jackson was the pioneer in the production of composition embellishments and fibrous plaster, and they still hold molds till today that were used in the historic decorations of royal palaces, museums, and stately homes. When visiting the factory, I was greatly impressed by the amount of craftsmanship that's required for making molds. The factory has an incredible collection of over 11,000 reverse cut hardwood molds that is one of the largest in the world. And now, let's see the traditional way of composition making. Composition. It's, it's, it's spicy like. I don't know if Dave has told you what's in it. It's linseed oil, whiting, uh, resin, which is pine resin, and uh, animal glue. So basically, it's like a warm pussy, if you want to hand that now. And if you smell it, you can probably smell the resin. Smell the resin. <laughs> and glue. <coughs> so that's the material we use. And while you're having a look at that, right, I'll go through this. <laughs> Give the mould a little bit of spot of oil just to help it release. Here's the pump oil. Mm, so good. Yeah, we make it here from the constituents, yeah. Um, yeah. Pale uh, glue, which is animal glue, and pine resin. That's, yeah, it's heated. That's, that's pale glue. That's, that's pine resin. Pale glue? What is it? Uh, animal hide rendered down, basically. Scotch glue, joiner's glue from the old days. Exactly the same. Uh, you've probably heard of rabbit skin glue that they use in. In art and stuff, yeah. Basically, it's the same. But, uh, I quite like it, it's quite a nice smell actually. Right, so. I didn't so, know. Right, the the into a. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, gonna roll the compote into a sausage. A great sausage roll. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes better, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Flatten it out, then we're going to pop it onto the mould. We'll just push it in with our fingers to start with. And the process is more or less the same for big moulds, small moulds, whatever size moulds we use, um, whatever the enrichment, the process is more or less the same. Uh, and it hasn't really changed much over 250 years, I think. Uh, just damp, damp the board so the compost sticks to it. You'll see why in a minute. Pop the board on. Press it on. Turn it over. And I'm going to swing this press around here. So, right. I'll be under the press. And it gets the first pressing. It, it takes about three pressings usually to, to come up nice and sharp. You'll see what I mean as I do it. Yeah, go on and have a look. <coughs> um, yeah, so basically three pressings on average. I've chosen this one because it presses easily, so it should impress you. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so that's the first pressing. Back it up. Cut around the edges so we, so we can locate the mould back on there. And separate it. Right, that's the first pressing. Not very sharp, okay? You'll see the difference in a minute, okay? It's, it's getting there. But you'll, you'll notice a big difference, hopefully, in the next two pressings. This time, instead of the oil, we put a little bit of French chalk. Another release agent. Um, it, it just dries it up a bit so we don't saturate it with oil. Otherwise, it gets a bit, uh, bit shiny and slippery. So it's just, just to help it come out the mould, really. 
try and get the mould exactly back where it came from, like so, pop it back under the press, mind yourself, give me another, another turn. For a minute. Any questions? <laughs> I don't know if David said, most of these moulds are probably, well we know they're over 200 years old some of them, but there's nothing under 100 years, um, so we're looking at some, some age and some wear, but they've, uh, they've lasted pretty well considering I suppose. Okay. Hopefully this time, we'll see a bit of difference. They're all moulds. Yeah, moulds there, we'll show you like there's moulds in there, there's moulds there, there's moulds around the back. We've got around, well, the, the numbers differ, but around 20,000. Separate it again. This time, getting sharper, if your memories are any good. Okay. If anybody wants to stop at any time to take a photo or anything, sharper, do we agree? Then we give it one more. It's bottled oil this time just to finish it. So, yeah, sometimes things take five or six times to press them. Uh, three, three minimum. So this is uh, this is an easy one. Pop it back. What wood is it made of? Uh, is it specific boxwood, wood? Boxwood generally, boxwood. or fruit wood, boxwood. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, it's really difficult to get big chunks of it these days. Is it <laughs> yeah. Um, we had a wood carver, or we had a wood carver that tried to get some carver some moulds, and he had real difficulty in, in yeah. obtaining big pieces. So where did it come from? Trips like historically. What the wood? Yeah. Uh, I haven't got a clue. The forest. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, in England, I suppose it, it was growing. Yeah, probably. Uh, just, Around, but these days I don't know. I would imagine it comes from abroad somewhere if you can get it. But the pieces that they've managed to get have generally been a lot smaller. I mean, we look at some of the big moulds in there, they're, you know, they're the size of you know, a short, like six foot scaffold board, so they're big old lumps. And some of these moulds just kind of like one on one, so if it, it's, yeah, it's, it's gone. The only thing we've got is the patterns upstairs, so occasionally we do search and we can't find a mould. Uh, last resort, we used the pattern and we made a resin mould, a modern resin mould out of resin as a last resort. But it's uh, it's a lot it's a lot nicer to use the, uh, the original semi -art. That's nice and sharp. So you get to that stage, that gets put under a piece of plastic. So what would normally happen, that would go under the plastic, and depending on the weather, but that would go under the plastic until the next day. And the next day, we take it out, and we cut what we call the back line down, because there's a, you can see the bump on the back? There's a bump on the back. You'll see that cut off, and you'll see me cut it off in a minute. Good night. Somebody give it a magnet. <laughs> yeah. Put my glasses on, so I don't to... And we cut. We cut what we call back line down. Is that already mostly set then? Yeah, it's stiffened up a bit. It's got, it's got a lot stiffer than uh, well, I thought it would actually. <laughs> <laughs> Then we pop over to. I'm going to go over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is the uh, probably the most difficult bit and the most important bit is cutting, cutting it off. I try not to mess it up. It's obviously a very sharp, too bad knife. And what we do is just try. Just cut it nice and evenly. Good. 
keep quiet here because I'm concentrating. <laughs> Believe it or not, there we go. That then comes back over here. Somewhere. And that's, that's basically it, okay? Um, you can see it's, it's still nice and flexible. Oh. Um, it gets trimmed off there and there, and this selvage around here gets hand trimmed, okay? Mm. And when it's hand trimmed, it ends up looking like... I won't bore you with watching me trim it. <laughs> Good question, yeah? That everything is reusable, so all this will get steamed back down and end up back my day may be back to start again. Yeah. So there's, there's practically zero waste really, which, uh, which is why the bus lights it. Uh, even that as well, that gets chopped off, put back in and re-steamed, okay? Um, I'll quickly show you what happens next, uh, that one. So that then hangs around for about a day and it will stiffen up even more than that, mm -hmm. okay? And then I'm going to go back over there. Sorry to keep moving around. No, come this way now, excuse me. So you're moving your, yeah. Here's one that, that, I, that, I, that I've done, so that's what it would look like. Mm -hmm. So what happens mm -hmm. is, it's actually, to get it into that bed, once it's, once it's gone a little bit harder than that, the next day, we, we use a hot plate, so this is a hot plate. So you put a spot of water on there, I didn't fire it up today because it's not much point. We put a bit of water on there and we just give it that and that. It releases the glue and the resin, which makes it really sticky. And it gets popped into there. Sometimes if you put, put a bit of PVA on the back and it just gets squeezed into there, like so, and that's one that's fixed, okay? And you see how soft that is, that's, that's how hard it goes. It's, it's like marble, okay? So it is, once it goes, once it sets, it is really hard. Nice thing about it is it can bend, we can bend it around radiuses and curves. We can stretch and shrink it. Believe it or not, it will, shri it will stretch and shrink so we can balance mitres up. Um, so it's, it's quite, uh, quite a versatile material, really. Um, so that would either go into sort of a piece of joinery, or it would go into a model on the bench when we then pour rubber onto it to make a mould. So that's the primary two, two uses that we've got for it. Um, it's just an example there of, that, <coughs> that I found ages ago. I don't know why, but whether or not they started the job and didn't finish, but they got halfway down carving it and stopped, yeah? Which is really nice, yeah. That's, that's, that's the pressing, you can see the process. It's amazing, really, how they carve them. Yeah, yeah, everything in reverse. Yeah. But this is, this is, I just got that out for in, just out of interest. This is a, a brass piece mould that they used to use. Primarily it was used not for compo, but for something called carton pier, which is paper mache. Um, where it was sort of pressed, made into a paste and pressed in with fingers. Um, the idea being, obviously, you can, you can get undercut. Yes. Mm. Whereas with all the all the reverse moulds, there's no undercut on them. Yeah. That's your draw. So, but paper mache generally. So had how would they have made the cast? Would they have made it like that to start with, and then cast? How would that make the mould? How would they make I, I the mould? I've asked people in foundries, and no one's really sure. Yes. Well, they they must have, have been made it that way. Well, they'd, they'd cast, obviously make a positive assume and, and then, then cast the pieces onto it. But people that work at foundries are a bit like, mm, I, like no one really knows. So. I guess they could, yeah, these days, <laughs> maybe. But, uh, but they work some art, really. But how would you guys now do that? If somebody came to you and said, "Can we have something like this?" and you guys had to make if you wanted it, if you want, if you want, if you wanted that in composition, yeah, with that, with that undercar on it, yeah, we'd have to do it with a piece mold like that, yeah. If you wanted it in another material, resin, cold cast resin or plaster, we can do it in silicon, do it in rubber molds, uh, and it, it, it's got flexibility. We'll show you a rubber mold in a minute. Um, but if you specifically wanted that done in compo, we would have to do it with a piece mold like that. But it's very rare. Um, sometimes what we do is when we've got a, com a composition mould to give it some depth, we just carve it back a bit. Once we've pressed it, we get a bit of gouge and we just carve it a bit, which is what they used to do to give it a bit more depth, to make it look more hand carved. Um, but it's surprising because a lot of the things, even though there's no undercut on them, not so much that, but even the egg and dart that I pressed, it's really surprising that comes out of a reverse mould. Uh, it's, it's got no undercut on it, so it's a credit to the people that carved them. Um, that's more or less it.
Okay, uh, moles everywhere. Yeah, and invariably what happens. In the end of the workshop, we were making our own little molds from plaster and we were putting it in the resin. So let's see how it turned out. So there it is. There's the mold that I was making. And it was actually quite quick to make. It was about 20 minutes, maybe even 15. Not too long. Just there. there you go. So that was pasta making. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, write your comments below what you think about pasta making. See you in the next video.